After producing and mixing over a thousand tracks, I can honestly say that referencing is one of the most useful techniques that you can use to get your tracks to sound more professional. Today I'm going to be explaining what referencing is and why you should care about it, how to set it up where you can reference easily and accurately, and going over major mistakes to avoid when referencing. First things first, what is referencing? At its most basic form, referencing is comparing the song that you're working on to a professionally mixed and mastered track. Now to do this, you use what's called a reference track. A reference track is a song of your choosing that you really love the way it sounds. Whenever you hear it, whether it's the production style, the arrangement, or the mix, it just feels right to you. Picking the right reference track is crucial and can really make or break your track. Now you might be asking, why should I care about referencing? The answer is simple. Let's say you were a track star training to run the 100 meter sprint in the Olympics. Now, when you're practicing, your consistent time for the 100 meter is 14 seconds. Now, without a reference, you might think that this is good and that you're onto something. But if you were to reference that time to what Usain Bolt runs in the 100, then you would realize that your time is way off and not anywhere close to where you need to be to be in the Olympics. This is literally the same thing as your music. Referencing should be used to understand what exactly is out there and what you're competing against. Now, this does not mean that you need to make your track sound exactly like other tracks, but it does mean that you need to understand what the tracks sound like that your potential fans are listening to. Another reason referencing is so important is because it helps you to understand what a good mix sounds like in your environment. If you're making music in any room that's not a professionally acoustically treated studio, then chances are your ears are lying to you. Let's say you're working on a hip hop track and your 808 is sounding a little bit weak so you really boost the volume and saturate it a little bit to help cut through. But then you go to the car and you realize it's way too boomy and way too loud. This is exactly what referencing can help fix. To solve this specific issue, what you could have done is to load up a song where you know the bass hits. Let's say for instance, a Travis Scott song. You could use that Travis Scott song to help you gauge where your bass is at. Now that we know what referencing is, let's talk about how we can set it up so we can reference quickly and accurately. Step number one is to find your reference track. This is a crucial step. A good rule of thumb that I normally go by is to use songs that I think would go really well in a playlist with the song that I'm working on. You want to imagine like you're listening to that playlist and your song comes on. Does it sound really quiet or unclear compared to the other songs in the playlist? Our goal with referencing is to bridge that gap between the reference track and the track that we're working on. It's where the listener could go back and forth and it would be a really smooth listening experience. Once you pick the track, there are two different ways that you can set it up, with plugins or without. Setting up referencing without plugins is a little different based on the DAW that you're using, but the principles are still the same. You want to set it up on its own track where the output is separate from the master. This step is really important because if you don't do this, the track is essentially going to be double mastered and affected by all your mastering plugins. So take the time to make sure it's on its own unique output separate from the master. Once you have that set up, you can easily go back and forth between your track and your reference track using the solo button. Now something that you might notice when you set this up is that the reference track is way louder than your song. And this can be really discouraging and demotivating because you feel like your track will never be able to compete. Now this is understandable, but it's also not fair to compare your rough mix to a completely done mastered track. The solution to this is level matching. You do this by pulling down the gain on the reference track until the overall level is about the same as your rough mix. Now the second way to reference is with plugins. There are so many amazing plugins out there that can really help you get the job done. A couple I would recommend are Magic AB, Melda Productions M Compare, and Ozone. All of these allow you to go back and forth seamlessly between tracks, and if you have the money are definitely plugins I would recommend purchasing. Now that you know what referencing is, why it's so helpful and how to set it up, I wanna go into some best practices that'll help you reference in the best way possible. First is to use multiple reference tracks. A reason you could do this is you might use different reference tracks for different frequencies in your mix. For example, maybe you like the low end in a specific Travis Scott song, but like the high end in the Gunna song better. What you could do is use that Travis Scott song to help you really dial in your low end and then use the Gunna track to help you get the balance right in your hi-hats and vocal brightness. The next tip to keep in mind is don't chase the reference. I know this may sound counterintuitive, so let me explain. Be okay with your track having differences. When you're referencing, it's not about making your track identical to the reference. It's more about the tonal shaping and balancing of the track. This one I talked about earlier, but I wanted to reiterate because it's so important and something I see so many people mess up on, and that's to game match your song to the reference track. Don't just go play the song on Spotify or iTunes and then come back to your project and expect to get good results. Pull down the level of your reference track to the same general volume of your rough mix to get the most most accurate results. Another quick tip is that if the reference track is way brighter than your rough mix, 
Don't just put an EQ on the master and boost the high end. Take note of what exact elements are brighter in the reference track. Maybe it's the hi-hats, maybe it's the vocal, maybe it's a nice synth pad on top. Take note of this and then go make the necessary adjustments in your mix. Something else you can try out is using frequency curve plugins. Some plugins you could use for this are Ozone Tonal Balance and Span. These plugins can be really useful because it allows you to see where your song's frequencies are compared to industry averages. A lot of them also allow you to import a specific reference track so you can directly compare. Let me give you an example of when this might be helpful. Let's say you're working on a pop track and you put on Ozone Tonal Balance on the master. Once you do that and put on the pop preset, you see that the high end is way higher than the industry average. Taking this information into account, you can go and adjust your mix accordingly. Something to keep in mind though is to always trust your ears when doing this. You should be looking at these plugins more as suggestions rather than something you should follow religiously. The last tip I have is to reference as you go. It is so much easier to do things as you go along rather than spending hours on a track only to find that it's way off from where it should be sounding in the mix. Referencing often will help you keep your ears calibrated to generally what your mix should be sounding like. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope it helped. For more music content like this, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button. It would really help me out with the algorithm. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs> That's so weird like hearing me say that. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Until next time, have a good one.